together in this house, I'm going to teach us about something that's very, very important. The most important thing I could ever tell you is this. When we say we want His presence and His presence shows up, we better act like we appreciate it. We better be grateful for that. It would be like... It would be like fixing your house, making a wonderful meal, and having guests over, and the guests show up as you have requested, and then when they come, you ignore them. I mean, it defeats the whole purpose. I mean, if we, if we are not going to, and I know we are, but if we would not be the people that would appreciate and enjoy God's presence, then why don't we get a bulldozer and knock this place over? This is why we're here. We are here to get you in his presence. Somebody has still been dealing with persistent migraines. I sense that in my spirit. We prophesied a couple weeks ago that God was going to deliver you from that. And if that persists in you, we are all going to lift our hands and we're going to sing this song, maybe the verse about holy, holy one more time. And if that persists in you, I want you to lift both hands and close your eyes and let God's healing power touch you. If you've been suffering with migraines and severe headaches, sinus, something's been going on, drainage, whatever the issue's been, I feel in my spirit that God's going to heal you right now. And your life may be going great, but we exist to encourage you, but we're also here to help those that are struggling. A few minutes ago, had a gun to his head and it went off. And God misdirected that bullet or he'd be in hell right now. I believe that. His ears are still ringing from the gunshot. We're going to find a gun. We're going to get rid of it, however it takes. But if you've ever struggled with suicide, suicidal tendencies, I want you to come and join with him. And I need, I need at least 12 men. I need at least 12 men to get around this guy. At least 12 men. This is a good boy, but the devils try to ruin him over and over and over again. My God. My God. I bind the devil. Stretch your hand to this young man. I bind the devil. I take authority over him. His scheme and his plot. I need somebody right now. You can either right there where you're at or come to the altar. Let's, we need a few people to hit our knees. Let's, let's get some folks to just hit, hit your knees right now. Hit your knees right now. Come on. We need to fight for this boy. If it was your son, what would you want your church to do? Jesus. Devil, you cannot have that young man. You cannot have him. He is not going to be one more Wayne County statistic. I'm so sick of this nonsense. I'm so tired of one more person ODing, one more person killing themselves, one more person shooting somebody else, shooting somebody else. Devil, you foul liar. You foul, filthy, deceiving liar. We bind your attempts. You will not do this on our watch. No, you won't. We do war and come against you in the name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. Are you scared? Huh? Good. Good. Because this ain't never going to happen again. You hear me? All right. Amy, come over here. Amy Hollings just wants to tell you something. She has a word from the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I want you to listen to this. I couldn't. 
And he said it a second time. He said, say my name. And I said, I can't, Lord. And he said, I'm not asking you to pray a fancy prayer. He said, just call my name. And I did, and boom, the enemy flew. He was gone. And I never dealt with suicide again. Never. It is his name. Yeah. I want you to say Jesus. No, no, no. Jesus wins. And you don't, you don't, you don't hear me say this. I'm telling you, listen to me. Jesus is going to win today. You say, well, pastor, this is not normal. Let me tell you something. It ought to be normal. It ought to be that every service somebody realizes that this is the place they got to get to. And so I just thank God that this boy is alive and well with us right now. That he is not, he is not bound by the enemy any longer. I think the guys are going to get him to the emergency room and let them examine him. He needs to do that. We need to do that. So, hallelujah. It's been, it's been 45 exciting minutes or so, 50, 50, almost an hour, hallelujah. So that leaves me just a few minutes to deliver the word. But I'm going to do that because it is so right on target. So I know you've been standing a long time, but in honor of God's text and the word today, I want you to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we lift up holy hands and thank the Lord that he's moving? Lord, we just give you glory, we give you praise, we worship your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Lift up your cry. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you are an awesome God. Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace. Shout, I have peace. I have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom also, the list begins here. I love this list. Now I started out with peace. Now also I have access <laughs> by faith. So I have peace. I have access by faith. Now listen to this into his grace it just gets better and better with Jesus I want you to say it's getting better and that this grace in which he's given me is how I stand then now I rejoice in the hope shout hope of the glory of God verse 3 wow it just gets better and not only that but I also, oh what? I will also glory in my tribulations. If you've got a problem or two, say, I do. And right now, if you've got a problem or two, let's give God glory because we've got a problem or two. That's all right. Knowing, knowing that this tribulation produces perseverance people who persevere like you and me do so as a result of the tribulations we just walked out of verse 4 and this perseverance the list keeps going produces character high character people have gone through a lot of tribulations and this character uh oh uh oh and this character produces hope. Shout it again. Hope. And hope, watch this, does not disappoint. Mm -mm. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit has given it to us. I'm going to talk about hope today. Hope, 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 hope. Last week, the young man from Indianapolis, the ex-pimp, the ex-drug dealer, is a pastor now, gave me a shirt. On the back, it said, hope dealer. I'm going to deal some hope out to you today. I'm going to be a hope dealer. Ain't going to cost you anything but a couple amens. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, hallelujah. Whew. Holy Ghost, you're in this house. Holy Ghost, you're moving in this place. It's in you we live and move and have our being. And I give you praise for all you're going to do in Jesus' name. 
Why don't we give the Lord a thunderous applause and give him glory one more time. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. You know, as you're seated, I can't wait to the day. I love the fact that we were worshiping God, and this young man apparently, you know, had this moment today where he tried to take his life, and I, I don't know, I'll try to visit him, but I will tell you this. Somehow he shot the gun. He got his ring in his ear still, and the bullet missed. Now, that doesn't happen, except if Jesus is there. And... I love the fact that he got in his car, broken, and came to church. I want, to, I want to tell you something. I say this with the greatest deal of respect, but I, I want our worship to be a time where somebody just interrupts the whole thing. I love to see someone bound in an alternative lifestyle just run to the altar in the middle of worship and say, Dear God, forgive me. Somebody that's abusive, somebody that's a drunkard, somebody that's a gambler, somebody that's a liar or a cheater or an adulterer, say, I, I cannot continue in God's presence unless I first repent. This altar is a place for dying. Amen. You come to repent and lay your life down. Hallelujah. I've been preaching about the fact that God has a miracle with your name on it. And some of you are getting a hold of it, and some of you are not. I want to put you into the text in Zechariah 9.12. And let's look at this just for a moment. It talks about a phrase that has literally captivated my heart for the last 20 years. I remember being, I've read the Bible over and over again at that point. I never read this till a man of God preached it. And since that point, I realized that word is about me. And he says, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Wow. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. When that man of God preached that that night, I said to myself, I will never again be imprisoned by anything but hope. When you are in prison, some of you know what I'm talking about, you have very little options. You are incarcerated. All your abilities to do anything but what the prison rules are is taken away from you. I am a prisoner today. People I witness to, I'll say, come to Lighthouse. And they say, they have this idea of our church or other churches as being a bunch of holy, sanctimonious, better than thou type of people who never, who look down on them and us, and they go, I cannot, Pastor, I'd love to go to your church. But I've been to jail. And you know what I tell them all the time? When you come to our church, you're going to be sitting among a bunch of prisoners. Furthermore, you're going to be hearing from a prisoner. I come by to tell you today I am a jail bird. Come on, I am a prisoner. I am bound. I am controlled. I am under the rulership, the tyranny of hope. I will never give up hope. Hope owns me. Hope pushes me around. Hope is my controller. Hope is my addiction. Hope is my boss. I am a prisoner of hope. People say, well, uh, do you ever give up on anybody? To, for me to give up on anybody, I'd have to escape prison. And everybody knows, ask Clint Eastwood, that's a lot of work. I am not going to escape the prison I am in. So no, I don't give up on anybody. you got to work really hard for me to give up on you, and I still won't give up on you. I'll give up on you the day Jesus gives up on me. You say, well, Pastor, I'm about to give up on him. Well, you can. When Jesus gives up on you, then you have a right to give up on them. I don't care how lost they are, how angry they are, how hateful they are, how mean they are, how much they hate you. I will promise you, you don't need to give up on them because we are alive and well. And if there is life, there is hope. Be a prisoner of hope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. And some people have captured this thought. There is a miracle with my name on it. But some haven't. And you know why you haven't? is because you are not bound by hope. Hope is no longer ruling your life. You have given up hope. 
I will tell you that there is a question I'll be answering next week on our celebration of God and country. Is there hope for America? Is there hope for America as a good old red, white, and blue dyed in the wool uh, son of a patriot, son of a disabled veteran? I am, I am American to the core. And there have been times I've come within a hair of giving up on our great people. Come on, somebody. But I will tell you, the Lord says, no, remember who you are. Get your hands on those bars again and grin. Because you are a prisoner of hope today. When you leave this place, all of you are going to be a prisoner of hope. I don't care how long you've had migraines. I don't care how long you've been hurting. I don't care what the, de the doctor has said. I don't care what the devil has said. Today, you're going to leave this place, and you're going to get your hope back. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Your hope is being restored. The issue with us is that hope almost has a negative connotation. It's like if you are... Constantly, Kathy and I counsel with these young couples. They're preparing for marriage, and I'll say to them, are you, are you going to have a happy marriage? Are you going to get along? Are you going to respect each other? Are you going to love each other? And if we hear these words, I hope so, then all of a sudden red flags start going up because hope has this connection with doubt. Hope has this kind of association with, well, maybe, maybe not. Come on, somebody. If you're sick and you come and say, Pastor, pray for me, and I say, do you believe you're going to get better? And you say, I hope so. It gives me, gives me some shaky ground in which to stand on while I pray for you. We read over in Hebrews 11, 1, that, hope, that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things. Now, see, now abide us. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, these three things, love, hope, and faith, faith, hope, and love. Hope is a big deal with God. But when the Word of God breathes out the, the word hope or the phrase like we read in our text, hope does not disappoint. It is a, great, a greater take on what the word hope means. Now, the Hebrew word tikvah means somebody that has great expectation. The, the word uh, elpizo in, in the Greek means great expectations great expect what hope means is that you are expecting great things you are not just crossing your fingers and hoping everything's going to work out you are knowing things are going to work out and we know that we have hope and hope make us not ashamed and i will tell you that i have an answer to give you for the hope that lies in me praise god i think i want every prisoner of hope right now to go ahead and jump back to your feet my lord you've been seated for eight minutes we ought to give him some praise oh if you're a prisoner of hope <laughs> Woo! I have these notes that I always write out but never look at but I want to look at one of them for a moment and I went ahead and circled it and I will tell you that the problem that we face is that we don't like being a prisoner. Well, honey, you don't have any choice. You are a slave. You are a prisoner of something. Romans 6.16 6, says, Don't you not know that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, to whom that is who you obey? In other words, you are slaves to either the one that's leading you to sin and the one that's leading you to death, or you are a sin, or you are a slave to a prisoner, or a prisoner of obedience lending itself to righteousness. My point is, Romans 6 and 7 says, but God, but God be thanked that you are no longer slaves to sin, yet you have obeyed from the heart this firm doctrine which is delivered. In other words, the day you stopped being a prisoner of sin, you started being a prisoner of hope. And in my notes, I went ahead and got a black Sharpie because Ephesians 2 and 12 says that at that time you were without Christ, you were strangers, you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, being in this world without hope. The greatest, most tragic feeling in the world is hopelessness. So you think that hell is going to be unbelievably tormented because of the fire, because of the worm that gnaws, because of the bottomless pit? Do you think hell is going to be hell because of all the bad guys that are in there with people? 
what is going to be the worst thing about hell is no hope. I mean, you could bear it for a million years if you knew after a million years you was getting out. You'd have something to look forward to. Well, you got nothing to look for. Listen, when people have nothing to look forward to, the enemy has them right in the palm of his hand. And I circled this, and that's why I got my notes. And I circled it when I wrote this uh, many, many days ago. But here's what I said. This is, isn't this interesting? Suicide. Who likes to read good? Brittany, can you read this for me? Right there. You just go ahead and read that in that black circle. You ready? Yeah, out loud. <laughs> Suicide is the result of hopelessness. Things will never get better. Suicide is not what the devil says do because things are bad. People don't fight suicide because things are bad. Great job, Brittany. Centerville Bulldog. Suicide doesn't come to your mind because you hurt. Suicide doesn't come to your mind because things are bad. What suicide says is it's never getting better. Hopelessness. You put a bullet in a gun, and you put, your gun to, you put that gun to your head, or you take those drugs, or you walk on a train track, or whatever you think, you get a noose, and you get a rope. Whatever those things might be that are tormenting you to that degree, why you do that, it's because you have no hope. But I come to tell you that Jesus is on his throne. And you are alive and that last heartbeat was a gift from God. And he has a plan for you and he has a future for you. He has thoughts for you of greatness and you need to restore your hope. Right now I bind, this is my church and these are my sheep. And I bind every suicidal thought that dare come across the bloodline ever again. And I say it's done. It is done in Jesus' name. I've asked this question. Please be bold with this. If you struggle currently with those thoughts on occasion, I want you to stand. If you struggle with suicidal thoughts, stand to your feet. My God, my God, my God, come on. Get it. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Listen to me. Listen. I will wait another moment. Listen to me. We'll wait another moment. This is your day. This is your day to be free. This is your day to be free. This is your day. This is your day. Amen. Amen. This is your day. Stand, 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 stand. Every last one of you, look up here. Look at me. You are precious. You are valuable. You are awesome. You are great. You girls, listen to me. You beautiful girls. You look at me. Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And that is a devil from hell trying to get you to take your life. I want somebody to go to these standing, and we're going to, we're going to declare victory. Come on, find somebody. This mile standing is in, in, in for somebody. We're going to win today. I'm telling you, Lighthouse wins. The devil loses. This is how this is going to work. The devil's defeated. Wow. Wow. Woo. That is not going to be an option you'll ever, you'll ever wrestle with ever again, ever again. For once and for all, it is defeated. For once and for all, it leaves you never to return. Amy said, the name of Jesus drove it out. I want all of you that stood, I want you to begin. Jesus, say it loud. Jesus, 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 say it a hundred times. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you're greater. Jesus, you're stronger. My God, my God, my God, my God. 
God, these minds, these minds can be set on you. When our minds on you, you keep us in perfect peace. Go, oh, God. Never again will this be a struggle. Never again will this be a thought. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. And if you've never, if you're like me, you've never faced that, faced that demon, why don't you just stand again and just thank God that you've, you've never had to, you've fought, you've fought battles, but that hadn't been one of them. And I thank God I haven't. I thank God I haven't. That doesn't mean I'm immune, but I thank God that's one battle. But we ought to thank him for that because that's a very real thing for a lot of people. They fight that a lot. They fight that a lot. They fight that a lot. If you're here today and you are a sinner and you need Jesus Christ, you need to give your heart back to the Lord. You need to come clean with sin. Today is that day for you. I'm stopping the sermon right here. I'm done with what I was going to say. I've said everything the Lord wants. I feel, I feel peace that the devil's defeated. But I want to know today, is there somebody here, you got some repenting to do. Would you raise your hand? There's some things in my life I just need to get right with God on. Come on, backslider, come home. This is the time to do that. There's some things in my life I need to get right on. I need to just get right on. God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be seated for a moment. I don't know how many of you, I hope many of you know Larry and Missy. I put him on the spot a moment. But Larry is one of our Sims of God ministers. They've been coming to our church for um, a year or so. And Kathy and I love them deeply, deeply, deeply. They're precious people. If you, uh, if you ever worked at the camp ministry, they... Missy, for years, was the camp cook. He, he was uh, one of the executives of the camp team. Um, your kids have eaten their food. Have you ever sent a kid to your, the camp? But he is a great minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he is in our church. They drive every Sunday from Muncie, and they, uh, they, they are in our church because we have a great relationship and they are here for a great and wonderful healing. And God has done a marvelous healing. And there would be a day that I was going to have him share a moment of his story. But today was the very perfect day to do this. Um, and so, thank you, Larry. Missy, would you stand? Would you let these folks know we're glad they're part of the Lighthouse family? We love them so much. And uh, I just felt like he can take a moment and speak to us. And um, whatever, you, however you want to say, whatever you want to say, would we'll just be you follow your spirit. But I thank you for being willing. Okay. Well, this really hits an accord with me, because like like Pastor said, I was a minister, a minister with the Assemblies of God. Been in the churches, and grew up Methodist. Become Assemblies of God when we got married in the early '80s mid 80s 
and I know the word and I know my Savior so thankful for that yet with all of that I hit a wall about a year and a half ago won't go into all the details right now maybe sometime I will but I got to the point where what pastor was speaking of I hit that hopelessness I was hopeless because what I did not because of what anybody did to me or the way people treated me it's something that I did that caused me to get to that hopelessness to the point I not only thought about taking my life I tried I attempted to take my life took a bunch of pills a minister I took a bunch of pills hopeless I totally regret that and we're not only just attending this church from that very point I repented God just like this young man up here this morning God saved my life he chose to let me to go on I spent I don't know how long a, a few days in ICU they were pumping medicine through me to get my liver cleared and all of that I should have some repercussions but I don't praise God for that and then beyond that through some counseling with a Christian counselor because I wanted to make sure why I had that thought you know was there something up here that was miswired or whatever and as I said I repented to God for getting to that point and trying to play God and to take my own life I owned what I did didn't blame anybody God I'm sorry I did this I didn't look for people to blame or situations and he took me right in and from that very point on his word just started filling through me and just like saying the word Jesus that comfort right there but I've been meeting with pastor and he's been helping me with this whole process and you guys know this I know you do I know a lot of pastors out there a lot of good pastors out there but this guy this lady right here they're the real deal they're the genuine real deal so of those people who stood up and there may have been some people who didn't who struggle with suicide just know you do have hope and it's it's in Jesus and it's in these people right here these people right here and the other pastors that are on staff here right here is where the healing begins and just just do it just open up let those walls fall and let God do the work and rely on one another thank you in the in the sims of God when a minister has a fall such as Larry has he his credentials are put on hiatus and they are put in what's called a rehabilitation process which is a two-year process about one percent who ever start finish but he's going to be in that one percent he's going to be completely rehabilitated and he's going to be a pastor once again maybe it's your marriage maybe it's your finances maybe it's your health maybe it's in some relationship and you are with you just very very close to losing hope well you know today today we're going to open up the prison called hope and we're going to put you in there and we're going to lock the door and we're going to throw away the key and you'll never again ever make a decision to live another day without hope stand with me and if you're struggling and you need your hope back you need your hope back in some level of your life 
this has been an incredible moment in God's house. And I would feel so remiss of all the great things that have happened if we didn't pray for all of you who need hope. Whatever it might be, let's sing Pastor Dylan. And as we sing and worship, if you want us just to agree with you that hope is, we're going to deal some hope to you today. Hope gets restored. If you'll just come, and whatever it might be, just come and stand with us. And let us just pray with you. If you're not coming, let's worship. Amen. Amen.